Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going up into Minnesota, and I was, I've been wondering why they don't start racing up there till May, but now I know because they just had some snow. But we're going to be visiting with young Joe Valento this evening. So, Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, man. I'm down here where it's warm. I'm not up there where you got snow on the ground. You still got snow? Yep, we still have snow. Still just a little dusting. It's uh, it's crazy. Just last week, it was almost 70 degrees with the sun out. I was starting to get a little bit of a tan going. And then here, here we know, uh, Easter Day, it's snowing again, of course. Well, so like I said earlier, now we know why you don't start your racing till May. So um, the, the coronavirus ban right now hasn't played that much effect on your racing season, but it's about to because it's just around the corner here. So what have you been doing to keep yourself busy now that you're kind of uh, quarantined? Well, definitely school has been keeping me busy now that we've switched to online. Uh, they give us about three, three hours a day of homework. Uh, our school, what they do is they give us all of our homework for the week, and we can kind of pace ourselves on how much we want to do a day, which I kind of like personally, because uh, everyone works at a different pace, and to be able to kind of pace out yourself and kind of your week and do it at your own pace is kind of cool, and uh, I like it a little bit better, actually, uh, just because then I'm not so rushed to get it all done. Say you got homework and you have to have it done by the end of the class, then you're not so rushed because you have the entire week to do it, and you can do it whatever time of the day you want. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then, obviously, iRacing, everyone knows, has been the big topic right now because no one's been able to go racing. And to be part of the Junior Late Model League has been really fun, and um, that's what you guys have been created it for, was to have fun. And uh, it's a really, really neat program. And I know it came together really quick with um, you and Chris and everyone with uh, Racecraft One, you really put this together really quickly. And um, there's a lot of really good competition in that league. So it's a lot of fun being able to go race with those guys weekly. So the question that I've been asking everybody is, what you're learning on the simulator right now, how much of that do you think is gonna actually transfer over to the real car? A lot, and I can testify. I know there's not a lot of track that us kids right now that we've that run late models and stuff like that, maybe that we don't run on like a weekly basis. But iRacing actually has the Milwaukee Mile on it. And last year when we went to run the Milwaukee Mile with the Midwest Truck Series with Kelly Byers, that was my second race in a full body stock car. And I I mean, they're moving there. The, the trucks are moving there. I mean, 140, 150 miles an hour for the second time being a full body car was, you're moving and it was, quite an experience to go around there, but definitely a lot you can take from iRacing. I know that I ran lots of laps on iRacing at uh, the mile, like a late model or a street stop, because that's kind of compar comparable, excuse me, to um, the truck that we run, and it's, it, it definitely showed, because we unloaded that truck. Obviously, Kelly does a stellar job with the truck. That thing's fast every time we unload it, but um, I know we unloaded, we were fast every single practice, set quick time, and we, we got second there in my second ever race. And uh, it just, it goes to show you how important this iRacing really is, just to show you the lines and just kind of how you can handle the car. And obviously with it not costing anything because there's just a reset button, uh, you can kind of try different things, find the edge of uh, how fast and how hard you can push your car. Uh, so definitely a lot to be learned there running iRacing. I know that's one of your dad's favorites part is the low cost as far as being able to get all this testing in. And, and again, like you said, if you get over the edge and you hit the wall, you just hit the reset button and uh, there's no crash clause. So my big question to you is, what are you going to have to do to get Kelly Byers to be able to start spotting for you during some of these junior late model races? You know, actually, my, my main spotter, Brian Tedeschi, spotted for my last race. And I believe he's going to do it again tomorrow. But, you know, it's funny. My dad was actually talking with Kelly. And Kelly's like, man, this iRacing has really become a big deal. He's like, oh, I might have to get myself a set up so I can go racing with these young kids again. I'm like, man, you really should. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be. I'm not sure you want to put your boss in the in the wall, though. Mm, probably not. Yeah, that would not be a good idea. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about iRacing and... Do you see this as being a part of your future moving forward? 
um, as far as being able to visit tracks and as you move up the ladder. And, and I know that we just uh, uh, announced today that you were made the, the Speed 51 draft list for, uh, for 2020. So congratulations to you for that. But how do you see all this playing out? Well, thanks, first off. And uh, it's become a really big part in any driver's career, I would have to say, because you hear a team spending amazing amounts of money on these sims that are full motion and every, every everything, all of the above, um, that's the best sport they can get because of that lack of practice that us drivers get at these different tracks, especially in the NASCAR level where you can't just go to a track on a Friday night and practice. So definitely in the future, and you can see how much attention the Sunday the Sunday uh, afternoon races are getting. I think it's here to stay. You know, I think iRacing is going to be around for a lot longer um, than some of us think, and I think it's going to become a, a, a thing that's always around and that's always going to be running and very could very well could be televised all the time now. Um, it, I, I think it's here to stay. Yeah, I agree with you, Joe. So let's fast forward a little bit. And like I said, a lot of people haven't even been in the cars this year. Your actual racing season doesn't start till May, but you got your feet wet down at New Smyrna Speedway during speed weeks. And I was privileged enough to be able to spend some time with you down there. How cool was that to be down there in that atmosphere? And, and again, I can remember day one, it was like, wow, you know, first time in a super late model stock car, and we put you on one of the biggest stages in the country. What was that week like? You know, you can't even really put into words what it was like. You know, it's just kind of one of those things that you can't really describe. Um, the whole deal running down there was really just started out as me going down with Kelly and just kind of being around in the environment, helping out whenever I can, but then slowly got to progressing that Brad, the owner of the car that I drove, was going to bring down his pro and two super late models. So he's like, heck, if he's coming down, might as well jump in one of the cars. So we got an opportunity to drive one of the cars down there. Like you said, one of the biggest stages, one of the biggest races of the year, definitely. And the field is outstanding. I mean, it's studs, absolute studs. There's no slouches down there. So, I mean, to, for me to be able to go down there and run with the pack, and I mean, I, I don't, I never went a lap down and um, just to be able to finish a crowd of people and just bring it home in one piece was really cool. And obviously a cool experience down there at New Smyrna. Uh, that's probably one of the faster tracks that I've been on. Um, a technical track for sure. Different, kind of a different driving style than what I'm used to. Obviously with the whole, the super late model. Um, with, with like a late model, like that our Midwest trucks. It's like a crate light model, basically, so it's all about that momentum through the corner. Whereas with the Super, you can drive it in hard, smash the brakes, and get that run down the straightaway, which is so important at New Smyrna because of the long straightaway. So it's a little little bit of a daffing to get used to, but definitely a lot of fun and, um, to be able to go down there and run. I ran, I ran a 50 lap and then 235 lap feature races was a lot of fun. Yeah, and like you said, you finished on the lead lap and you brought the car home, basically... I think maybe one little scrape on the right-hand side from one race, but besides that, that was it. So I think being there in that tough competition and that tough of a track, I think you walked away with there with like a five-star review. For sure. It was a lot of fun, too. Great experience. So let me ask you something. Let's kind of move forward a little bit and start talking about your upcoming season. You're going to be running the pro trucks. You're going to also be running some selected uh, super late model races with Kelly around the country. I think some of those are still dis indecisive where we're going to go, but we are going to be able to run some of them. But what are you looking forward to as far as getting back in that truck? And I know that running for the championship is definitely on your target list. I'm just excited to get back into it. I mean, heck, it's been months since I've been in the, well, I shouldn't say that because New Smyrna, but it's been months since I've been in the truck since, uh, the following race in October, and those trucks are so much fun to drive, so much fun, just because they're, they're different, you know, they're not a late model body, it's different, different aero package, and they just drive a little bit different, they're so much more stuck um, with that aero package, so they're a lot of fun to drive, I'm, I'm excited, and obviously going for the championship is going to be big on our radar this year, and um, I know Kelly, I said this earlier, I mean, he, he does stellar, his truck is stellar, 
I mean, it's a great truck. And I'm very fortunate to be able to run with him. It's, it's uh, it, we've, we built a sort of bond. You know, I've, I've talked about this before. I can get out of the truck and walk over to Kelly, and we basically make eye contact and we know what each other's thinking. I, I feel like we think a lot of alike. We, we're not... We're not super talkative people, but when we talk, it's usually smart things. I think we can relate in that way. And it's like I said, I can just get out and walk over to him, and we know exactly what's wrong. And I tell him the feedback. He's like, yep, that's exactly what I saw. We go do an adjustment, get back out, and it's always positive. And then we, we pick up speed every time we do it. So um, to be able to have that kind of relationship is important. And with him being a retired race car driver, I think that helps him as a crew chief. Because when I say these things about maybe whatever I say, if it's tied off because this happens in the entry, he knows what I'm talking about because he's probably felt that before. So for being a crew chief, I think that's really beneficial for me and him. Yeah, I would have to agree. It's, it's kind of crazy how your two guys' personalities is so much alike. And I know being at some of your races and being down at New Smyrna with you, I'd walk over and ask your mom or dad, I'm like, are they mad at each other? And they're just like, no, they're both just really quiet. So I think there's a good combination of good chemistry that you guys are building there. And I look forward to the season getting started. I know you're going to be really, really strong this year. Now, what a lot of people may not know, and we're not really sure when the announcement date is going to come, but you're starting your own podcast. Are you excited about that? I am very excited. We've actually done a couple recordings with um, two other kids so far, and they've done a really great job. I mean, for as young as they are, they, they do a great job, and they actually surprised me. I could learn a thing or two from them, but uh, really cool, honestly. I, it's a really great opportunity for me uh, just to work on my talking because, obviously, I could use work, and that will help help me learn a little bit and to be able to kind of be the host. It's kind of a, a different different spot for me because I'm used to, you know, you or Tom hosting for me. Um, it's kind of cool being the host, being the one to ask the questions and follow up on what they say. It, it's different. I kind of like it. Yeah. And what's your, what's your podcast going to be called? Uh, Joe Valento, Who's Next. Joe Valento's Who's Next. Now, what I thought was funny about your comment was, is share with everybody how old you are. Uh, I'm 15. You're 15. And you just said talking to some of the younger kids. So how young are some of these kids that you're going to be interviewing? So we're kind of shooting for the ranges from about 10 to 14, somewhere in that range point. But like I was saying, I mean, they teach me stuff. The, <laughs> the first two kids that we've talked about, they've done a stellar job, like a really good job. I was really impressed. Well, Joe, we look forward to you bringing that out. So we're just about ready to wrap up our show tonight. Is there any of your sponsors you want to give a shout out to? For sure. Ardent Mills. Uh, we actually got a chance to go down to the mill earlier this year. That was a lot of fun. Really cool to uh, have Johnny show us around and teach us a little bit about the history of it. Uh, that mill is actually built on the very first foundations of it. So you can go and see the very first, the very first wood pillars and stuff that it's built on. So that was really cool. And then, of course, Nitro Lubricant, uh, Race Face Brand Development, the Friends of Jacklin Foundation, High Performance Park, and then KBR Performance. Well, Joe, I want to thank you again for being with us this evening. Now, if all of you want to follow Joe Valento, visit his website at joevalentoracing.com. It's got all the social media platform links there that you can go follow him on Facebook and Instagram. And again, if you've missed any of our spotlight shows, you can go check us out at raceface.tv on demand and get caught up. And make sure when you're on Joe's Facebook page or in his fan zone on his website that you subscribe to his new digital newsletter. So again, Joe, thanks for being with us. We'll be looking forward to getting back for another episode with you later this year. And we hope you're back at the track real soon. Thank you. Everybody, my name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the next Race Face Spotlight.